HP. Thinkers are great, but doers change the world. Yeah! True innovation changes the way we live. In the case of medicine, the visionaries developing the latest technologies are aiming to save and improve lives in countless ways. By making technology smarter, smaller, simpler, and even cheaper, innovators are giving doctors and nurses in hospitals like this one here in White Plains, New York, new tools to see inside the body. They are forging new paths in the developing world with cheaper testing technologies, and they are even restoring sight to the blind. The first time a blind person was able to see a spot of light still remains the best moment of my academic career. When I was a very small child, I set out to save lives in the noble way that children do. The fact that I use it is not because it's remote. I think it brings me closer to the patient. Kathy started going blind at age 23. Diagnosed with retina pigmentosa, or RP, first her peripheral vision went, then gradually the rest, a total loss of sight. I am the first in the family to have the disease. It is hereditary. I do have a brother who also has the disease, and he is also totally blind. My daughters are fine but my grandchildren could have this disease. Dr. Mark Humayan has made it his life's work to help blind people like Kathy see again. I moved into ophthalmology to restore sight. My grandmother went blind from diabetic retinopathy and led me to start to think about this area. The artificial retina, for as long as I've been interested in ophthalmology, studying and practicing it, has been my research focus. Humayun's artificial retina does for the eye what a cochlear implant does for the ear. The artificial retina is basically a tiny camera in a glasses which sends the information wirelessly to the implant. It has a antenna, so the information is wirelessly transmitted from the camera, which sends it via this electrode array into the retina and the implant then stimulates the remaining nerve cells and sends it via the optic nerve to the brain. At the Doheny Eye Institute Labs at the University of Southern California, Humayun leads a diverse team from academia, government, and private industry. The first clinical trial, named the Argus Project, started out small. The Argus 1 series had 16 electrodes and six patients were implanted. And I remember uh, walking out of the operating room. Uh, first of all, we were exhausted because I think we'd been up three days in a row just to make sure that everything worked perfectly. But the results were the culmination of 10 years of work. The first time a blind person was able to see a spot of light in the operating room still remains you know, the best moment of my academic career. So are any of these electrodes falling outside of the acceptable range? Brian Mech of Second Sight, the private company that manufactures the implants, has attended almost all the procedures since the first implant in February of 2002. One week later, we turned him on, and at first there was nothing, and you could feel the sense of panic setting in, in the room. And then eventually, um, the, the patient says, oh, there's something, oh, there's something. And then from that point on, very quickly, the patient was pointing to locations of objects and even uh, started reading letters projected on a wall. And another partner was added to the research team. We got the patient involved in helping us figure out the software and asking them, uh, look, which looks more like a big E. And I'm seeing a flash, a flash, and a flash. Kathy turned out to be the perfect subject for the second set of trials. Coming up to the corner. I was a little nervous, I have to say. I kept going for each test thinking, well, you know, I haven't made up my mind yet. When they handed me my consent form, made me really nervous, it's about 21 pages long. But with the knowledge that she might be helping her grandchildren, she signed up, becoming the first patient to have the Argus II implanted. The newer device also has 60 electrodes versus the original 16, which allows it to transmit far more data. 
I love seeing the movement of things, even just staring out at the street and watching the cars go by. I could just stand here and keep looking. These are the glasses that I wear. If I want to look at something, I scan with this camera. This first piece is the connection. It's a wireless connection to the implant in the right side of my eye. Probably the hardest part of this study is trying to explain, you know, exactly what I do see. It's non-dimensional. It's very flat. So there's another one now. OK. Some of the easier letters, I have to kind of scan the edges of it with my glasses, and I'm able to tell you it's an E or it's an A. I was able to see fireworks in the sky. I can't see the color, but I could see all of the flashes. The third generation of the retina will be even more sensitive with 1,000 electrodes versus the current 60. Where we go next, with 1,000, you'll be able to uh, read uh, and recognize faces. We're looking to match the camera with the eye movement by putting the tiny camera in the eye. Restoring sight to the blind isn't cheap. The artificial retina costs around $100,000 and the surgery between eight and 15,000. The Argus II is expected to receive approval in Europe for commercial release by the end of the year. The next hurdle is convincing insurers or payers to reimburse for the device. Dr. Humayun looks forward to a future where the vision he restores to the blind is more and more colorful and detailed. Every time I think or we think the technology is at its limit, we're just uh, surprised by the human brain's ability. I was able to point out the moon in the sky. I can't quite see the full shape of the moon, but I'm hoping that's going to be coming.